Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to attend this concert. As I often will announce, when we have beautiful weather outside, we're always a little bit nervous about the audience and whether they'll choose to stay outside or come indoors, but I'm glad that you made this choice. I think this music will be as re refreshing as a stroll in Rock Creek Park, or we would hope that would be the case. Um, I'm not going to, to make too many announcements. This music will speak for itself. You can find some program notes that will tell you some other things about the music. I think in particular with the cantata, because it's in uh, German, do um, take a, a moment to follow along kind of line by line so you can really get the full impact of this beautiful text and the way that it's set to the music. I'm, I'm uh, incredibly grateful to this group of, of friends and colleagues who've come together to play this music in, in such a joyful way, and um, I, it, it makes living around here such a delight. Uh, for those of you who've lived and worked in DC, there, this is a great town for music making. You can find amazing musicians just around every corner, and I've met some new ones for this concert um, who I hope to be experiencing um, in the future very soon. Thank you all for very much for coming, and um, we will begin this afternoon with some music of Bach.
So we experienced um, something that we haven't seen since April, actually, or heard since April. Uh, we have a strange gremlin in the organ in the control system, which, which uh, pops up in interesting and disturbing ways. And uh, the last time it did it, it happened during a closing hymn on April the 8th. Um, and it's, there's something that makes it pulse a large number of notes and then suddenly go away. Most of the time, we're lucky today because most of the time it leaves in its wake a cipher that will not die without turning off the organ. So for a little while there I was thinking, I wonder how long this will go and then it faded, it went away and that was great. So it was no problem other than a few notes that Bach definitely did not um, write. And then we have another mysterious gremlin which makes banging noises inside the organ and has been doing so for a little while. So we're, we're a little under the weather uh, with the organ here and yeah, I suppose it's a perfect segue for me to say that we are in the midst of, of actually uh, addressing or raising the funds to address the, the problem which will ultimately um, mean we need to replace the control system in the organ. There we go again and that's a good reminder for me to turn off the organ. Uh, so I'm glad that it worked for us through this piece but it's one of the reasons why you as the Evensong concert uh, audience hasn't heard this organ in concert because as often because other than say Eric Suter who I know and who I can apologize to afterwards personally I don't know, know that I would voice the instrument on a, on a visiting soloist of stature so we have been waiting to be able to do that until the organ is behaving itself luckily it was pretty good it's not bad we have a few things to talk about this week but we'll be we'll be good so uh, now we turn to the cantata. Um, this cantata is very uh, dear to my heart um, because for no other reason than I just started listening to it and couldn't stop making it repeat again and again and again. Um, there are so many beautiful uh, moments in this cantata. Uh, I'll let you choose your own without um, weighting you with my, my favorites, but it, like all of the cantatas, it is really filled with some of Bach's most beautiful writing. He is at his best, really, I think, when he has a text to sink his teeth into and when he can um, paint it in different ways with different instruments. And there are so many innovative things in this and all of the cantatas. We could talk about them all afternoon, but how much better to just listen to them. So a, a big thank you to, this, to this, uh, this orchestra here and to our esteemed soloists. And we will now uh, present for you Bach's cantata number five. Thank you.
as we reset the stage just a little bit for the last piece on the program, I will tell you that this is the piece that, um, that this program was generated out of. So Joy and I were talking about how wonderful it would be to get a group together to play the Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 5, which Joy played when she was a college student. And, um, and, and so we, we then were thinking, it, we put it on the program and we didn't fill the, the other remaining spaces with anything for a while. Um, and it was only later that we came up with this idea to add cantatas. So everything that you've heard so far has actually been um, in kind of, not in second place by any means, but it's been leading up to this piece, which we really, really wanted to, to perform um, in this space. Uh, for the for really the first time that I can think of in uh, in my time here, so it's such an amazing concerto. Um, it's one of these pieces which, when you discover it, um, I, th I did when I was a a young young person with my first CD of this piece or whatever it would be. Um, I might have I didn't hear it live. I think I heard it in a recording first, and it was just one of these mind blowing. Uh, experiences. This this music is so beautiful, and the construction is so fresh, and and uh, it really is groundbreaking for for its time. The types of techniques that Bach was introducing, and and I really do love the way that the harpsichord, um, little by little, becomes a solo instrument. You can see it. You can hear it happening right before your ears. This is the piece that uh, moved the harpsichord from its role as a continuo instrument, as we were just experiencing in the cantata, um, to a solo instrument. And it comes out in this concerto. It's really quite exciting. Joy plays it beautifully. And uh, I, I'm really pleased to sit here and experience this music with you. The Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 5. <laughs> 